Does that shirt say scab? Nope. Am I right? Nope. It says sack after strong. Where did the term scab come from? Your mom. But really. Her. I, I honestly, I don't know. I've heard, it's been around a long time. The first time I remember hearing the term was when Major League Baseball players were on strike back in the 80s. And they called any player who would cross the lines yeah. to go play because what the owners were doing was going for people who weren't yet pro players yeah. and saying, fine, you're going to strike, we'll fill in the place. That's the first time I heard the term, but I don't know that it originated there. Yeah. Yeah. That's what they're doing now with influencers. Calling, what do you mean? Since calling them actors scabs? Act, no, actors can't go to um, the uh, premieres. Right. And so they're inviting influencers in their place. And so people are calling influencers. Oh, an scabs. influencer who goes in place of the actors. The, the inf these Got influence it. technically yeah, yeah, yeah. aren't SAG members Got or it. actors. Got it. But a lot of people are like, you're replacing. Yeah, them. no. Yeah. That doesn't really qualify in my yeah. opinion. <laughs> Hey, welcome back to our Super Directs of Corbin. We're not scabs. You can follow us on Instagram, Twitter for more juicy content. Thank you to everybody who supports us on Patreon. Follow us for your account. If they're not, and threads, if they're not, if these influencers aren't members of SAG AFTRA and they're not acting, I don't consider them scabs. Yeah, some people do. I mean, because influencers would cover the promotion of. Hello? Yeah. We're. But technically, ours aren't union stuff that we. That True, we, that but even if it on. was, if we were doing stuff on 2.0, uh, which technically I don't, we would not be allowed uh, to go promote a. Yeah, a technically we wouldn't be able to 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 do, because we're, we're right sad. right exactly. But if they're not SAG members, uh, you can't. No. So, so like if Barbie, even if it was how sad it would be if Barbie contacted us and be like, "Hey, you want to?" Oh, we absolutely promote, could not promote right. it. We couldn't. Or Oppenheimer. We were, or, we were, yeah, we we, we, we absolutely actors. we absolutely could. Not. Anyways. Hi. Hi, everybody. That's not anything to do with this video. Today we're doing a movie review. <laughs> and we're doing a review of the new 2023, not technically new, new, but new to 2023. I believe it came out in January or somewhere around there. Early. Early uh, in the year. Uh, but it... Do... Where is it? Why... Why isn't it coming up here? Oh, uh, yeah. I, had it I don't see it on any of your uh, I had it. Any of Anyways, your tabs. But it's called uh, Val Valvi. Valvi, yeah. If that's, I don't know if we're pronouncing that right, but what else is new? Well, kind of like Volva. Am I yeah, right? that's right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, the um, new Marathi dark comedy thriller, I guess. Yeah. Uh, is what they would call it. And it's uh, directed by uh, Paresh Mokashi. If I've mispronounced, forgive me. Do you know what you've seen him before? I've no. seen him, but you know he's directed? I do not. Oh! Cool. <laughs> yeah, he directed, uh, and that was, you know, over 10 years ago as well. That was but, the, uh, the he also H Factory. Partially wrote it as well, along with uh, uh, Madhuganda Kulkarni. Who is the producer? Kulkarni. No idea. Okay. Uh, and then starring, your, your three main leads are uh, Swapno Joshi. Anita Date Kelkar. And then... And then Subod Bave. And yeah. if I've printed... Again, forgive always mispronunciation. There are other people as well, but those are your th your three main leads. Yeah, yeah. Um, but this will be... Since it came out six months ago, we'll do a spoiler review. Uh, so if you haven't watched it, it's on Z5. Uh, it's only about an hour and a half, hour yeah, it's 40. A, so and it's it a goes by quick. It's a short little film. Uh, so go watch that there and come back uh, so you're not like a spoiled, like a spoiled little spoiled baby. Uh, Rick, your initial thoughts of... Volvi. And we, we are, we are, uh, you just said we are gonna yes. do spoils right out the gate. Yeah, just because yeah, yeah, it's yeah. been out six yeah, months. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, if yeah, you'd watch like it. You'd like to see a non spoiler back. one. There are some out there that you can go see, but just, you, I would yeah. say going blind, right. actually. Yeah, going blind, always better. Yeah. Uh, so, there's way more to like than not like. I didn't love it. I was hoping I would when it got started because I was loving the premise when it got started. The things I do love about it, we will talk about because there's, like I said, there's there's way more to like and enjoy about this. And I'll talk about why I didn't ultimately love it. But yeah. I, I can see why people would really enjoy it. It is very entertaining. It's very funny. It just had some things in it that mm. I'll express a little bit later that kept me from... Just going madly in love oh, with gotcha. it. Yeah. Uh, now I really enjoyed it. Uh, it's it's kind of right up my alley uh, for for this style of film, especially the end. 
um, which was <laughs> yeah, yeah, I knew a lot like of fun. Uh, so we'll, we'll we'll talk about that as well. But I, I had a one. I, I I do one. This had a very small budget. Marathi. They had kind of. They typically always, always would. Really yeah, small budget. But also, I've heard that this is a new genre for Marathi. They don't. They haven't gone into the dark comedy genre a lot. Um, well, did a good job. Uh, um, so that I, I I do like that and applaud it, and it's done very very well. As yeah, well. it is done very well. Uh, so that's fan. I love hearing when smaller industries have films that one are good and do well. Yeah. Uh, so Marathi, I, I do believe they're kind of like Malayalam in terms of they their people do like uh, to support. Yeah. Just, just good films, which is and so, wonderful. So that's a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's just, it's I I really enjoyed it. I was along for the ride. I I had a good time. <laughs> it it also like you know I'm always trying to like get ahead get of the a, film. Guess ahead. And it. it, it swerved for me a lot of times and I was like that's good thank yeah. you for for not going the stereotypical route uh, in a lot of places uh, and so I had a really good time I thought all the actors did a really good job I did, uh, yeah they did too we'll talk <laughs> about that um, but let, let's just get into uh, their performance uh, for first and foremost I like that the fact that this jumped right in me too well. me like, too they, right they, at the get go there's no build up no nope. it's just here's the plot <laughs> yep let's go uh, and it, that's good uh, that it keeps people engaged. You Great know, start. There's not a, a slow time uh, to to get into it. Yep. You start off and you're like, okay, we're gonna kill ourselves. And then you figure out what's fully. Well, you start to figure out what's going on, and it's kind of almost like a Ocean's Eleven heist. Mm -hmm. that, that the setup of it. It's like, right. Oh, we're gonna do this. Here's the plan. Blah 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 blah. Right. And then it turns into a comedy of errors. Yeah. Kind of, yeah. <laughs> kind of kind of film. Uh but I actually I, we didn't shout out her, but I thought um not the lady in the clinic. Uh, who's the wife? Um oh sorry we shout out the wrong person. Uh we Oh yeah Shivani surveys is the dental is person, the, the dental she's doctor. The main, and then there's also Right and then Anita Date Kal Kalkar is the who, the wife. If you've seen it for reasons uh she she didn't have too many lines, but she did have some. Yeah, she did have some. Um, she did a very good yeah, job with what she did. What really she had. Job. I, I liked because uh, <laughs> I like films that the, all these characters were very uh, to put it kind of gray, right? Uh, I think at first you, you'd say that the the two main the the couple they're like okay. They're having an affair and they're trying to kill, so they're they're probably not good, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then this other guy, you thought he was kind of just a nice therapist, and then he, <laughs> he decides that I'm going to kill her now. Right. And then just the shit hits the fan. <laughs> now they're, once again, spoilers, mass murderers. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> All of them. Uh, and so I, I, I like the, the spiraling out of control... Like really, when it started to spiral out of control, uh, it, it it became even more fun for me. Yeah. Uh, but I thought all three, especially oh four, I guess so you have your four main leads did a good job. What do you think of the the yeah, actors? Yeah, I thought everybody did. I didn't see anything at all. There was there was one small moment that um, was the, the the moment when uh, she pushes him and he falls back on the couch. I could tell that was orchestrated in that moment. That's the only moment. It was early on where she, the the dentist person, yeah. um, he was telling her something about the story. He was excited about it. And to get him to stop, she just gave him uh, a little okay. push and he fell back on the couch. Gotcha. I could see that he knew he was going to fall back on the couch. Gotcha, yeah. a very, 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 very nitpicky small moment. The only moment that I felt was false in terms of everybody being believable. I, I really felt everybody brought their A game in terms of their acting ability. Everybody did a really good job. It helps that you have a really crisp script that has you talking to one another the yeah. way that they were talking to one another. Um, awesome. And I, I'm sure there were th some things as well that came through in the editing process that the actors loved and made their performances heightened. I could yeah. tell there were some the, editing choices editing that helped. And transitions the, between certain uh, scenes, like they did pans and then it panned to the to the next. Like it was a really good job by the uh, editor and cinematographer. Yeah. Uh, in that the huge, it's always a huge part of the storytelling, but in this one in particular, the cinematography and editing played a, a, a really important role in keeping us connected to the characters and seeing their reactions. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and adding to the comedy. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, I was going to... I was, God, I was going to say something and then I forgot. Anyways, 
there's the one particular moment with the editing I loved where he's explaining to them right when they first get there and he's, exp you know, like they, the, the, the therapist, the therapist. Yeah. And they've just discovered that he took her body and she's dead in the chair. And there was a moment between all of them where, and I loved, they would go back. He would look at her and would go back to when he was talking to her before she died. And then it would come back to them in the room. There was this one really quick moment where they just looks between each other and a little head nod and a shrug and a go back. That made me laugh out loud. Yeah. I like the, uh, the amount of like he let the comedy happen, yeah. Because it's it's all situational, obviously, in this. Because like the all the comedy, because it's which good comedy is, yeah. It's it's all situational. Yeah. You don't play for the laugh. <laughs> you're just like this is this is ridiculous, absurd. <laughs> <laughs> you're you're all of you are murdering people <laughs> left and right, yeah. Uh, and that that's what like it goes. The comedy goes into overdrive in, in, at the end because there's just so much is happening. Um, but the uh, God, I remembered what I was going to say, and then I just forgot it again. <laughs> what the fuck was it? Uh, oh, no, I was going to say something about the um, the fact that it was such a low-budget film. Um, you couldn't tell off... You could tell at certain times that they probably wish they had some more money uh, in terms of just, like, uh, just certain things with, with camera and... Um, but the fact that he did so much with so little... There's not a lot of sets. There's not a lot of um, there's a, there's a lot of time in the car, a couple outsides, and then there's the three the dentist office really, the house, and then the therapist's house. Yeah, it wouldn't surprise me if there was zero set construction. Oh no, yeah, except for like the creation of the chandelier, prop, yeah, yeah. <laughs> small things, but no. Didn't have to. It didn't have to build something in a soundstage. Didn't have to go build something in an exterior. They just used real locations. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so good job on. The, I'm sure you're very, very. I don't know how much it was, but I'm sure it was extremely limited. Yeah, just being Marathi and um, a, a dark comedy genre that hasn't been explored that much. Mm -hmm. um, so I, hats off to the director and, and the writing and the the creators and the whole to, team. Uh, yeah, to uh, make something that is engaging and fun. Uh, when it <laughs> the when it really starts getting into overdrive, you just you knew what was going to happen. Like people started piling. Up. I was just the, the bodies just keep piling up. <laughs> like people keep coming into the car. Yeah, and you're like, okay, now we're going to know you have to kill this person now. Right. Obviously, you already started, and then the the cops going back. Okay, you have to kill the cop now, and then they just kill this random person that they could have saved on the side of a road. Right, because, right. I was like, you guys are, and then I. Like, it was going and going, and I was like, I know there's not much left in the movie. I actually looked at the... I paused it and saw there were 10 minutes left, and I thought, <laughs> how are you going to wrap this up, yeah, man? Because you, you're you still yeah. seemingly deep in the plot line here. Yeah. Yeah. You're like, you can't <laughs> redeem these people. They're just murdering people right. now. Like, they're just... They're flat out murderers. Then they they're gonna they gotta get caught. Yeah. You can't be like, oh, we'll learn from this. No. No, you have to get caught. You're like you can't like be like these people are redeemable when they've killed like eight people or something, yeah. <laughs> something like that. <laughs> and the fact that it just right at the end and they were like gonna figure out what's I I didn't know if they were like and then they keep happening until I didn't I, I was like, Are you just gonna end it on an open on an open thing, <laughs> right? Like, uh, and then they like comedy of like air. Yeah, they try again tomorrow, and, right? And then it keep, they kind of keeps going on, <laughs> and then they just get crushed by the chandelier. And I, I think whoever came up with that <laughs> with that ending, and there's a particularly tie -in, yeah, particularly the termite tie-in. Yeah, I thought that was very very smart. Yeah, it's like her. It was it was it was uh, unpredictable enough to have the chandelier fall on him. Yeah. I didn't think at that point because there were several moments. Uh, this is one. This is the. There were several times throughout where things happened that for me, and it wouldn't be this way for everybody. It's just me. Would have uh, really strained credul credulity and didn't have a justification for me in reality, drink. huh? It's a drink. Uh, yeah, have a drink. <laughs> um, and and so at that point, I wasn't expecting a justification for the chandelier. I thought it was just a nice button to end it on the level of uh, inane ridiculousness that this mm -hmm. film had been. Yeah. But to have 
it felt really nice after the several moments throughout where I found stuff that for me just didn't sit with the believability and justification factor mm. to have such a strong justification for the chandelier mm -hmm. showed a level of insight and intelligence throughout the, the, the storytelling that was very pleasing. I was yeah. very satisfied like you with, with that ending. Uh, it's, you know, me and my endings and I end on the strongest moment. I mean, I would, and they did, they didn't technically end on that moment. They, they, they I would have preferred that actually. I didn't need but, to see the aftermath. Yeah, you could have just panned up and saw termites. Yeah, yeah, um, just boom. But it wasn't that long. They, uh, it was no, like, it, wasn't. it was like a, a less it's than fine. a minute scene. It's fine. after, and I was like, okay, whatever. Yeah, because obviously they were like, there's three bodies on the couch. There's three bodies on the what? What, what, the, what the hell, hell happened is happening <laughs> here? Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, um, but like right when it <laughs> fell, man, I. First, I was like, <gasps> and then I just died laughing. And I, I would love to know, as far as concept and storytelling, a lot of the times when you write a story, you begin with the end in mind and you build backward. Yeah. You you can't build this thing backward from that ending. Really. I mean. Well, you maybe you could. I mean, if you did, I'd be astonished. Uh, writers are a different breed. Man. A completely They're, different breed yeah. worthy in America of a 2% pay increase. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, the uh, <laughs> I very very much enjoyed it. The end was a lot of fun. Uh, just it's 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 very very me. I I enjoyed it. I was along for the ride, uh, and I had a I had a good time. So it, it, it succeeded. What were the, uh, the the some of the I'm assuming strain of credulity moments? Yeah, there were just a couple of moments that for me in the justification because this wasn't. This wasn't. This was comical and dark, but it wasn't farcical. I'm reminded of uh, uh, Andrani and I uh, got to see. Um, or no, it wasn't Andrani and I. It was Ashley. It was Ashley and I. We got to see on Broadway. Um, it, this won the Tony, I believe, for comedy on on Broadway. It was um, uh, a gentleman's guide to love and murder. Fun show, uh, but it's very farcical and it's very much the same thing. It's kind of a who done it. It's yeah. it's but it's. Very tongue in cheek. Oh, we know. Very know ridiculous. Um, yeah, we do. <laughs> no, there were just some moments for me that actually you, some of you would might be able to answer, and it just didn't get through my thick skull because I was just having a oh, I get it moment, that and that 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 happens. <laughs> um, I I um I didn't I didn't fully understand some of the motivation behind the uh, the psychiatrist what he felt he needed to cover up because he had a. a an absolutely willing person to take the blame the moment the husband stepped in and did what he did and he saw that. I know that they tried to explain that in the text when they're having a conversation because he said they would find my DNA in her belly, but if he can't be placed there at the crime scene and the crime can be placed on him, I don't, it didn't, it didn't have a fully fleshed out well, justification. He, he, he had poisoned her. He had, but. Yeah, so the, they're going to see that he was, she died by the poison. They explained that when they were doing the whole the scene in, in his right. house. That they'd see that she died via the poison first. Correct. And his DNA is in her belly. Uh -huh. And so that would have implicated him there. It would have given him an implication. However, that it, it would have been an extremely far-reaching, far-fetched implication because of the fact that she had drunk the poison herself. So it could have been simply she decided she didn't want to be caught. It would have been really easy for him to say, well, she clearly killed herself because she was so ashamed. She'd been going through all of these problems. She was already suicidal. That's what she was talking to me about. And the fact that we had had an affair was the last straw for her that pushed her over the edge. And she was too shamed to admit that she had this happen. And even though she had a baby inside of her, it wasn't her husband's baby. So she just ended it by poisoning herself. Uh, there, there's he doesn't ha there's no there wasn't a strong enough sense of him needing to cover it up especially when he, the husband came in and did what he did because he left enough stuff and traces that if anyone would have been implicated it would have been him mm. who the psychiatrist then could have said if he was asked well clearly he was angry with his wife because she was pregnant with my baby so he not only poisoned her, he made sure it was really done by make, when she was passed out, shooting her in the head. He just, it didn't feel like it was a strong enough implication for him to I, justify him stealing a body and hiding it. I, I didn't have an issue with it um, in, in, in that moment. Uh, it, it seemed fine to me. I, it was perfectly believable to me. I, I get it. 
So it's fine. Yeah, and uh, then just a couple of the couple of other times of the taking of the bodies in and out to me in the midst of the, the place where they live to have not been seen was somewhat implausible for me because they had to move her body from that place to his place and then out again. And then they brought all three bodies back to their place, especially on a night like New Year's Eve when everybody's up all night and out and about anyway. That was another one that was hard for me to swallow of. Not once did anybody see you guys hauling these dead bodies in and out of homes. That's, just, that's part of movie, though. That happens a lot in, like, whodunit movies all the time. And I'd have the same problem. Also, I'd have the same problem with any movie that did that, and it just didn't it's, it's, seem it's uh, plausible that people plausible. could see. Yeah, but it's also plausible that people didn't see. Yeah, but it's more than likely they would. I think that if that's your viewpoint, yeah. But I, I don't. I, I, I think it's just as plausible that no one could have seen or thought anything of it uh, that she was just asleep. I don't. Considering it's like I said, considering it's New Year's Eve and everybody's out and about, and you live in a city, uh, if they were in a remote part of India that would be different and as well as they went running away from the car wreck because someone turned a light on and they didn't want to be seen mm -hmm. yet he gets out and goes back to the car to make sure that it's completely engulfed in flames mm -hmm. what's the justification they're going to see you do that too so why why well they, did he did I, he I um, did he assume i've already been seen so screw it i think it was more of he's the guy in the car got a good look at him so the other guy probably just saw if they were looking saw a shadow of just a random person he saw his face so he needed to make sure that that guy was uh, again if you're if you're running from a place because you're so scared you're going to get caught it doesn't make sense to me that you're going to go back to that spot you were just running from to do something else that you could be seen doing that just is irrational well if the not if the guy saw your face and you don't want, obviously, but also they're not going to do everything rash because they're trying to not get caught for murder. <laughs> so they're not going to do everything rash. Like <laughs> they in the in the beginning, they were trying to plan out everything perfectly and they still couldn't do that because, you know, uh, you can't predict everything. What would have solved that would have been one character saying, why did you go back? You were going to be seen just the acknowledgement of because there's so many other things they acknowledge but I had already that are it. more complex than I mean, it's the reason they killed the cop. There's so many other things that they're aware of. The whole r rationale behind we're not going to do this, we're not going to do this, we're not going to do this. They're constantly thinking about what they're going to do and what they're not going to do. So it just wasn't plausible. While the other things were very plausible, the majority of the things that they did were very plausible. Mm. Yeah, it's just those those three or four things that I felt were not justified. Well, you are an idiot. So there's that. Um, but yeah, no, I didn't. The, those didn't bother me in that in that scenario. But that's fine. Um, but you overall enjoyed it. Right? I did. I overall enjoyed it. Yeah. I can understand why people would love it. I understand, and I'm thankful. It's very original. I would I would watch this. We haven't a hundred times more than I would watch the majority of the Marvel and DC films that have been coming out recently. Although I have heard, did you you, you heard or seen? I don't think you've seen it. Mm -hmm. I I heard Guardians. This last Guardians was yeah, actually quite was actually good. That's, That's encouraging. Good hear, so. And I want to see the Spider Man. Oh yeah, yeah. Because that one, the first one was great. I need to see that as well. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but it, it also, we don't often get to see new Marathi films. Yeah. Either. So um, I, I'm glad we got to see this. Uh, because people had pointed it out, because we would catch it, we caught up a bunch on a bunch of Malayalam films that we missed last year. And so yeah, like make sure you don't miss the the new films this year. And people yeah, this one's this, one this one's fun. And so if there are others that we have missed in Marathi or other languages that came out this year or last year or whatever, uh, please let us know what they are. Um... Oh, you know what I figured out because in, in the not not. Not not wrong or whatever the yeah the, the uh, Tolkien Carney film nude is the same director oh uh, as, as that film as that film apparently. interesting so I've wanted to watch nude since we saw the trailer yeah uh, and I like being nude I do too so, uh, in the summertime it's what I do and I'm sure they'll remake this in Hindi and Akshay Kumar will play the lead. Um. <laughs> Anyways, let us know Probably. what you thought about the uh, this Marathi film. What should be the next Marathi film that we should watch? Please let us know down below.